Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer from English with Jennifer. I have a very special lesson to share with you. I invited a new friend to join me. You'll get to test your listening comprehension as you hear our unscripted, fast-paced conversation. I'll highlight key vocabulary that you can take away from the interview. But you'll also have the opportunity to hear about one person's ability to overcome some incredible health problems in order to pursue and then achieve a fulfilling life. I met Cassidy Amber Chapman through an online community, and it turns out we both live in Massachusetts. Moreover, we both self-published books back in November 2022. I understand that someone has to have a very compelling story in order to find the time and desire to write about it. I wanted to learn Cassidy's story, and I think you'll find it interesting and inspiring. Cassidy is the author of The Vibrancy Codes, a guide to vibrant health and vitality. We have another thing in common. Back in November when we published, my book, for a very brief time, was the number one new release in midlife management. Cassidy's book was the number one new release in holistic medicine. Cassidy has earned five-star reviews for her work and she continues to sell it worldwide. In addition to sharing her story through her book, Cassidy has been traveling to give in-person talks. In her own words, she's on a mission. She's on a mission to empower those who are craving a vibrant life. I'll tell you that when you crave something, you desire it very strongly. As for what a vibrant life is, I'll let Cassidy explain. Well, Cassidy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. <laughs> Yes, of course. I'm so excited. Welcome, welcome. Well, you and I have met before, but of course, I'm very eager to learn a little more about you. And for those watching, um, perhaps you can start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Like, who are you and what do you do? Yes. So I'm Cassidy Amber Chapman. I am a holistic health and life coach and international speaker and author of the number one new release in holistic medicine and energy healing, The Vibrancy Codes, A Guide to Vibrant Health and Vitality. And I help people create happier, healthier lives for themselves and those around them. Isn't that an awesome job to help people have <laughs> yeah. a happy life? I got a pretty good gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're exuding the, the happiness. I feel it from you. Um, but you're throwing out a pretty long job title there. So let's pick apart one word that could be unfamiliar, not even just to language learners, but even native speakers. You said holistic, like yes. um, life coach, life coach. I'm starting to learn what life coaches do. Holistic coach. Can you explain for people who, what is a life coach as, as you practice? And then what is a holistic coach? Yeah. So for me, it's about integrating your whole self. So holistic means whole. So when I go through my programs or my my courses or anything that I'm interacting with my one on one one on one spaces, I create this holistic approach, which is physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually and having all of these different uh, healing modalities being used in all the different ways is really important to be able to create what I call vibrancy, which is this, this vibrant health this vibrant vitality, uh, so that you can live in the most uh, this this energy of just living fully in every single one of your moments. So the simplest of terms of what a holistic health does is help you co-create co a healthy lifestyle through manageable steps that you can take daily. In not just one aspect of your life, but again, holistically looking yes. at many or all aspects of your life. Exactly. Right? Do you know what a gig is? Cassidy explained that she helps people create happier, healthier lives for themselves and those around them. I commented, isn't that an awesome job? She laughed and agreed and said, I got a pretty good gig. In the past, we tended to use gig for temporary jobs that people would get as actors and musicians. But today in American English, we use gig for all kinds of work. Cassidy was being humorous because her work is very important and special to her. But speaking in a light tone, she said, I got a pretty good gig. 
Cassidy explained that holistic means whole. So a holistic approach addresses all of you, all parts of your health. It integrates or pulls in different healing modalities, that is, different types of treatment. And a life coach provides manageable steps that you can take daily. So as a holistic life coach, Cassidy integrates different aspects of a person's life and guides them to healthier, happier living. You really can't be happy just in one sphere, right? No. It becomes sort of a game of balance. Exactly. And it's one aspect of your life is going to affect every single other one. And so when it really comes from this holistic standpoint, you get to actually transform your entire life transformative I like that now <laughs> you're being holistic coach you don't you know I'm thinking of childhood so many kids have childhood dreams of I want to be a doctor or a singer or a dancer whatever I don't think you were eight years old and said I want to be a holistic coach so my question is <laughs> how did this happen like can you describe your career path and what led you to this job it's it's funny because I when I was young I wanted to be a doctor and I I wanted to be up to up until I I graduated and this whole thing started, um so my story starts around uh, has to be like eleven years ago so now it's crazy how time passes by, mm -hmm. and at that time I started having mystery medical symptoms so I had gained over fifty pounds in under three months eating less than five hundred calories per day. I had purpling all over my arms. I was nauseous every day. I was dizzy. I could go on with the, the symptoms that I had. And I went to doctor after doctor and test after test. And they kept telling me that I was fine. I was all right. It was all in my head. Or they were blaming it on the weight that I was gaining. Hmm. And so when I said, I'm really only eating less than 500 calories per day, I was, I was accused of lying and closet eating and things like that, hmm. which was really, really defeating at the time. And after two years of this, I finally found a doctor who would prescribe me a medication that drastically helped with the symptoms. And I'm so grateful for this doctor. I'm so grateful for this medication. However, it was suppressing the symptoms. Uh. And after five years of symptom suppression, I uh, went through a health crisis. <laughs> and this is where all of those symptoms had come rushing back. And new and worsening symptoms had started, uh, including unbearable pain, physical pain, where it felt like knives were ripping me open from the inside out. Mm -hmm. It was unbearably physically painful. And the physical pain had gotten so bad that I started to have panic attacks mm -hmm. every single day because mm -hmm. I was so afraid of the physical pain that I was in. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember... Panic attacks had gone so bad that they would wake me up in the middle of my sleep to have a panic attack. And so I remember this one night, I woke up from a panic attack because I was afraid of, I don't know, I, my body was just in fear. Right. And I was also in physical pain. Right. Yeah. And I remember taking a, a pillow and just screaming into it mm -hmm. because my family had been up with me day in, day out, trying to comfort me through this never ending pain, but it was, it was never ending. And so I just wanted them to be able to sleep, even though I couldn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember looking up at the ceiling and just thinking, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It was such a defeating feeling, a uh, defeating time. Mm -hmm. And during this health crisis where my physical pain already made it feel like life wasn't worth living because of how physically in pain I was. I, uh, I also had these other things happen in my life. I had ended a 15 year friendship that had felt like a divorce. Mm -hmm. I was broken up by who I thought was the love of my life at the time. You know, your first love you think is the love of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, during this, this one year period, I also had four family members die. Oh, I'm so sorry. Gosh. And during that time was really, really dark, but gratefully a couple things woke me up. One of them being one of the family members who died. He was 32 years old. Oh, so young. Yeah. And I remember when he was dying, he was texting me, Cassidy, I don't want to die. I have yeah. so much left to live so much yeah. to experience. And when he died, I felt this duty, not only to live for myself, 
but for him and for everybody else that didn't have a chance to live. I highlighted words while Cassidy spoke. Let's review them and say them aloud. Learn some phrases that go with them for greater context. Nauseous. She felt nauseous. All in one's head. They said it was all in her head. Closet eating. They accused her of closet eating. Defeating. The accusations were defeating. Suppress. The medicine only suppressed the symptoms. Unbearable. She experienced unbearable pain. Day in, day out. Her family was there to comfort her day in, day out. The love of one's life. She thought he was the love of her life. First love. She lost her first love. Duty. A duty to do something. She felt a duty to live not only for herself, but also for him. And uh, the second thing that happened was uh, I had this really significant dream. I, I hold dreams in high esteem. I, I believe they give us messages. Mm -hmm. And in this dream, do you know in a, in a, in a nightmare where you kind of feel like something bad's going to happen, that eeriness, you yes, feel that. Of course, we all know it, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had that eeriness like, oh, something bad's going to happen. Yeah. And it was, I think, the dead of night in the dead of winter. And I was watch walking on a huge frozen lake of ice. Mm. I looked behind me and there was miles of ice behind me. Huh. And I looked in front of me and about a mile away was a hospital. And as soon as I saw it, I felt this deep desperation to get to that hospital. And Jennifer, this, this dream was so vivid that I felt my bare feet on the ice. Hmm. I felt the cold air biting at my skin. I felt parts of my body going numb. And so I started to walk, I started to walk. And as I started to walk, the ice cracked beneath me and I plunged into the water and I accelerated deeper and 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 deeper into this water. And when I finally stopped, I looked up and I was miles away from the surface. Huh. And this dream felt so vivid, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to let go and to accept a cold, dark death. Mm. And that moment was very dark. And I, I still, it still brings me chills when I think about it. And I looked back up. And do you know when you see a small glimmer of light through water? Shines just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. There was a small glimmer of light where I had fallen. And I felt this fear come up. Is it too late to want to live? Mm -hmm. And then this will to live washed over me. And so I started to swim. I started to swim. I started to swim. I started to swim. And as I was swimming, it was getting harder and harder to swim. It was like there was more and more resistance. It was like swimming through water, then honey, then jello, then... <laughs> concrete like it got harder and harder and harder mm -mm -mm. and after what felt like hours I finally pulled myself onto the ice the sun was coming up I was super excited and then this defeat and loneliness crept on my spine hmm. I realized no matter how far I just swam I was still all alone stuck mm -hmm. on ice and in my defeat I looked off to the side and I saw two men in a boat <laughs> The boat was half sunken into the water. And somehow they got to me and they asked me, do you need help? I said, yes, I need <laughs> help. <laughs> Please. But in the back of my mind, I was wondering, how can they help me if they're drowning themselves? <laughs> and so I woke up with three very significant messages that came to me. Hmm. The first was that it was, there was still a will to live. Yes. Still, I still wanted to live. The second was that it was going to take all of my strength to get out of the dark hole that I was in. And it was, there was going to be more and more resistance the closer I got to the surface. And the third 
was that I was asking help from people who were struggling in their lives themselves. Mm. And so I took a brand new black notebook and I wrote down Cassidy's health plan or Cassidy's healing plan. I can't remember which one. And when I wrote that down, I had the intention that I was going to get healthy and absolutely nothing was going to stop me. And it brought me down the most beautiful journey of healing physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And this, this holistic health became my greatest accomplishment, my greatest gift. It, you know, when we think about health, we think about not being sick, mm. but when we think about avoiding pain and illness, but rather on my journey, I found there's a health that we can feel in every single one of our cells. It's a health that allows us to feel connected to life, connected to people around us, connected to ourselves. It's, it's a, it's a health that you radiate this health and people want to soak in your energy. It's a health that brings you to a higher quality of life. And this is what I call vibrancy. And you, that's, yeah, that's it. That's a vibrant health. <laughs> yes. And that is what I call the vibrancy codes. Um, people could ask me, how, how, how did you do this? Yes. How, how did how did you make this happen? And I they kept asking, what's that one pill? What's that one? <laughs> what's that one healing modality? And I said, it's not one not thing. Just one. It was every single decision I made towards my health. Mm -hmm. And I said, I could write an entire book about what I did. So you did. <laughs> <laughs> We just heard a key word as Cassidy defines it. Vibrancy is a state of being. For her, it's a high quality of life. According to Cassidy, vibrant health is not just avoiding pain and illness, but being healthy in our whole body and being connected to life, to ourselves, and to people around us. It's a kind of health that brings us to a higher quality of life. Vibrant is the adjective. Vibrancy is the noun. Cassidy's vibrancy codes allow you to achieve vibrant health. Vitality is the energy she mentioned. It's the lively energy she demonstrates. Let's quickly review other words from her story. Eeriness. The eeriness in her dream made her think that something bad was going to happen. Desperation. Deep under the water, she felt desperation. Vivid. Her dream was very vivid. Accelerate. Her fall accelerated. Glimmer. Deep under water, she saw a glimmer of light. Creep up. A chill crept up her spine. Yes, I think you share so openly and so honestly about your struggles. What is it that you want people to take away? It's you know we talk about so like so called sob stories, and and some people use sob stories to gain attention. That's not what you're doing. I know you have this pure heart. What do you want people to take away from hearing about your struggles? I want people to know, no matter where you're starting from. Mm -hmm. you can create these higher quality levels of life that you may not even know are possible yet. I didn't know it was possible. It was through my struggles that I was able to, to put on some armor that I didn't even know was creating me to these new higher levels of health and well-being. But whatever you're going through, no matter where you're starting, I, I tell my story so vulnerably and authentically because people think, oh, you're just a happy person. <laughs> oh, you just have great energy. Oh, it, this is easy for you. Oh, honey, it was not easy. <laughs> I started from a place that was so low and so dark, but no matter where you're starting from, even if you're at mediocre and you're ready to get these higher levels, right. no matter where you're starting from, you can always reach a new level of health and well-being. And if there's a small fire of desire, allow, allow these stories to take you up to these places without having to go through rock bottom. I don't want you to have to go through rock bottom like I did to get to these higher levels. I went through it so I can teach you rather instead of you having to go through that rock bottom. Right, right. And so much of what you're saying resonates with what I believe is that what we want, it becomes a choice, right? Yeah. Like even health, good health is often a matter of choice. 
there, there, there's that will, will to live, will to live and be healthy. There's something I, I read, it, I was visiting your website and something um, caught my attention. It's like you, you said you made this decision and you knew that you were born not just to survive, but to thrive. And I think so much, so many of us, we, we all have these dark moments, dark times, um, some to a higher degree than others, but we all know darkness. We all know dark times. Um, but so often it's, it seems like we're surviving and not doing enough of the thriving. In yes. your words, how do you dis make the distinction between surviving and thriving? Oof, what a great question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was really in this survival state is when you feel like you're grappling at anything and anyone to help you to try to, to, to help you. And again, this is when the realization of I was asking help from people who are struggling in their lives themselves. Mm -hmm. And then I started to look who's thriving in their life. Mm. How can I emulate that? What, how can I ask them for help? Or even how can I start to become my own savior? And surviving is like media is that that mediocre, like I'm surviving. Yeah. I, I've made it happen, but it's not fulfilling. Thriving is feeling that fulfillment in every single thing that you do, no matter, no matter if things start to crumble and fall, you still thrive because you have this internal power. And thrive, I would say, is is an internal power that you cultivate cultivate so it's not something you again the magic pill isn't there and you just don't take it boof you're happier and healthy <laughs> yeah. right so uh, your book is called again um the vibrancy codes a guide to a vibrant health and vitality codes codes that are common to all of us that we can all learn to apply how did you crystallize that idea <laughs> yeah so the word code in itself it means something you can embody it's not just having knowledge because knowledge is nothing without implementation. For example, everyone knows meditation is a yeah. great thing to integrate. We know the studies, we've seen the benefits, but a lot of people said, I've tried meditation. When I, uh, when then I ask, okay, so you tried meditation. Um, how many, how many, how frequently? Okay. Maybe once or twice a week, maybe once or twice in, in itself, you've tried meditation. And then I ask, have you tried to meditate for 15 minutes a day daily for three to four months? And they look at me like, what? Because I'm like, that's what the studies are. That's where you see the immense benefits. It's through the daily implementation of these healthy habits mm -hmm. that make these, these, this thriving inevitable. But it's through that consistency that you see the, the immense benefits. That's why people say, I've tried. You really haven't tried if you haven't tried to implement it every single day for a matter of months to years, because that's where you see the real changes. So codes means not just doing the things, but how are you how are you actually doing them? How are you being while you're doing? It's this beingness that we have during the doing that completely shifts it, shifts what you're able to do for yourself. Let's take another look at key vocabulary. I'll give you phrases and sentences for context. Sob story. Tell a sob story. Share a sob story. Armor. Put on armor. Vulnerable. Vulnerably. Cassidy made herself vulnerable. She told her story vulnerably. Mediocre. A mediocre life. Rock bottom. Start from rock bottom. Be at rock bottom. Hit rock bottom. Thrive. Cassidy decided to thrive and not just survive. Grapple. She was grappling with problems and searching for answers. Emulate. You can emulate people who are successful and happy. Cultivate. We can cultivate a healthy, happy life. Crystallize. Crystallize an idea. Crystallize our thoughts. Implementation. The successful implementation of an idea. 
Consistency. Meditate with consistency. Right. And I, I think it makes it all the more believable to know that you're not promising this solution. Hey, you read the codes, you got it. And okay, now I got the codes, I'm all fine. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a set of practices that need to be implemented. Yeah. And of course, to learn all of them, we'd have to read. Um, of course, there's <laughs> other ways to, to learn because I also know you don't just um, have the book and you're not just sharing your ideas um, in print. You also practice as a coach, right? Yeah. So what kinds of people do you serve? What kinds of people do you work with? Yeah, for me, I really work with only those who are ready to reach that next level of health and well-being for themselves. Like they're ready and they're willing and they're they're like, okay, I am ready for that next level. It's it's this willingness, this readiness saying, I'm ready to be supported is what's really important because I'm here as a support on your journey. And so those are the people that I help as the ones who are truly ready for the transformation. It's so true. It's like we're wanting help, but not necessarily open to help. And I mm -hmm. think it, it again, it comes down to that choice. Do you want to be helped? Do you choose to be helped? Are you looking actively um, for those mm -hmm. two guys in the boat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever figured out who, what they represent exactly? Well, or is it that's, that's, I was realizing they were drowning and they were coming to say like, Oh, do you need help? And because they were, I, I was, they were drowning. I was like, yeah, I need help. But clearly they couldn't help me. <laughs> they were drowning themselves. And so I realized, okay, it's time for me to become my own savior. It's time for me to build my own boat. And it's time for me to be the captain of my ship. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's so true. It's like you don't want to just be helped. And then it's a temporary state of stability or security. Yeah. You want to build a secure place long term your Absolutely. boat, whatever it may be. Um, what is something that we could do? Of course, we, we don't have um, immediate access right now to your set of codes, but <laughs> is there something that you can share with us as a healthy practice that yeah. anyone can start doing if they have the will to start yeah. doing it? Absolutely. I mean, I already mentioned, you know, implementing 15 minutes a day meditation daily, you know, that's great. One thing I want to say is that it's how you implement the codes. Mm -hmm. And that's the practice I'm going to show you now. And implementing the codes, first and foremost, you want to just sit with yourself, sit with your body. And I, I invite the, the listeners just maybe just close their eyes for a moment and just ask your body, what do you need right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we continue to look for doctors and people and all these people tell us what we need. How about you ask your body, what do you need right now? And that is first and foremost, how you want to cultivate a relationship with your body so that you're able to implement these healthy habits and physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That's beautiful. It is. So many of the answers that we're searching for are within, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, you have to find that quiet moment to mm -hmm. do it. Oh. And create that quiet moment. Yes. Thank you. Right. Is there any final message that you'd like to share or any information you'd like to give? Yeah, I, I just want to remind you all, no matter where you are, no matter where you're starting from, no matter if you're you're happy, but you feel like there's there's more fulfillment to feel and you might even feel guilty, like I'm already happy, I already have a great life, like, can I want more? You can want more and you can create it for yourself. It's okay to have desires, follow the burning path of your desire because these higher levels and higher quality levels of life are available to you and you are worthy of them. Thank you. Right. How can people find you? How can they buy your book? Yes. So the Vibrancy Code is a guide to vibrant health and vitality. You can buy it on Amazon um, or Barnes and Noble or, um, you know, other places, but Amazon just seems to be the, uh, the mm -hmm. easiest for people. And then you can follow me on social media at Cassidy Amber Chapman. That's both for Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'm very active on Instagram and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn has all my other websites and things like that. You can check out if you are looking for coaching or things like that. Um, but Cassidy Amber Chapman is for all those platforms. And I will include all links in the video description. Cassidy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor. 
I hope you enjoyed the interview with Cassidy. You can buy her book, The Vibrancy Codes, A Guide to Vibrant Health and Vitality on Amazon. You can also follow her on Instagram and learn about her coaching services and speaking engagements on her website, CassidyAmberChapman.com. That's all for now. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, you can take your studies beyond my videos as a channel member here on YouTube. Click the join button. I invite advanced learners to become lifelong learners with me on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching everyone and I wish you happy studies. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Turn on those notifications.